Well, uh, you know, ex you know, uh, give me uh, your current feelings about Boulder in general. Boulder is a bunch of uh, semi-rich people walking around using a bunch of other people in the neighborhood or in the city to put themselves up on pedestals by looking at people like in this group right here and going, ugh, and shying away and won't even look at you or walk away and at the same time probably saying a bunch of things about you or the other people that are around you to put, them, put you down and put themselves up on a pedestal. That's how I feel about Boulder and the people that live in it. Especially the, you're, you're either the have or the have nots in Boulder, just like in any other major city or any other city in the United States of America. Well, have you seen, uh, have you seen the, that increasing attitude in the past uh, years? Without a doubt. I've been here s over seven years now. When I first came here, people would actually say hello to you. Now it's, it reminds me of where I came from, which was the East Coast, Baltimore, Maryland where people would lock, your, lock their doors when they saw you across the street or saw you coming and didn't like the way you were dressed or the way you looked, and then they would sit there and turn away or shy away or lock their doors or grab their purse or hold tighter to their wallet or their handbag or whatever they were carrying. Is it possible that uh, that's simply because these people have actually come from those areas of the country and they uh, really don't know that Boulder uh, you know, uh, has a history of uh, acceptance, but that it... Uh, actually well, they it's losing its history. <laughs> it's losing it pretty rapidly here from what I've seen here lately. And that's the past uh, year that I've been uh, without a job in the past six months that I've been homeless. Can you blame that on the system or the people? I think you can blame it on both because the people are the system. And they're the ones that run the system. Can you, right? give, me, can you give me one example maybe, something more concrete that we can uh, <sighs> hold on to? Think. Well, I'll give you an example. I uh, was recently uh, went to saw my worker at the social services, and I asked her, well, can I get some type of Medicaid or Medicare help to get it? And she was so, this is a woman who's supposed to be my technician and qualified me to get food stamps and to get some disability money, of which I was a taxpayer before I lost my job earlier and paid mucho taxes in in the past four years before that. And I asked her, well, I need some type of medical help to get some help on some prescriptions. And this is a woman that works for the state. And she said, well, I don't know what to tell you. What kind of answer is that from someone who's supposed to be helping people? Well, that reminds me. I, I went to folk rehabilitation uh, because I suffer from manic depression. And I uh, was hoping to, at one time to get married. I thought, you know, I have to, if I want to be married in this way the system works, I can't be on disability. They'll take it away from me. So I'm going to try to get a profession, a job, something to that'll carry the load and uh, they they told me that uh, I was too much of a risk and uh, so they couldn't help me with computer classes or okay. technical classes because uh, basically I had to prove that I wasn't disabled to get help to be rehabilitated. But that's why you were you were disabled in asking for the help. If you weren't disabled would you have been asking for the help? No, you would have been out there doing whatever you needed to do, right? Right, and so they told me to so basically go it's to the old a, catch twenty two. You're yeah. damned if you do, you're damned if you're done. Right? That's, that's basically I, I find it uh, Boulder's somewhat a catch twenty two. It is. Definitely. I mean that's that's the whole that's the and Boulder is just a, a small if you magnify it, that's the United States, these wonderful states we live in. So really if you really looked at Boulder it might even be a paradise compared to other parts of the country. In some ways, yeah. But in other ways, it's the same as any other part of any any part of this country, any other part that I've been in. I don't know what to tell you, man. I mean, it's just it. You know, you wonder why you got people in homelessness and you got all that, and then you're gonna have George Bush gonna flood the flood gonna flood the United States with a 1.6 trillion dollars after Bill Clinton and Al Gore got done taxing and pulling all the money back in, so the money he had in circulation was worth something. Well, pretty soon it ain't going to be worth nothing. Pretty soon the lines are going to get longer at the shelters and the lines are going to get longer at the soup kitchens. As we and continue to give welfare to the rich. Exactly. Like Pat Bowen, for example. Let's build him a $360 million stadium when the guy's worth half a, million, half a billion dollars, right? But we're going to, the taxpayers are going to subsidize this stadium for him, right? And then we're going to sell off the, the name. Right, well. and then sell the name. Am I going to get any of that fucking $60 million that they're getting from Invesco? Am I going to get any of that? I mean, I did pay taxes. 
for four years before I uh, became uh, disabled. Am I getting or is, is the state when they get that sixty million? Are they going to chop it up into little checks and give everybody some back? No, I don't think so. You'll have to be first in line to yeah. get one of the luxury boxes. Yeah, there you go. Right. Are they? Or can I get? Maybe I could get the you, you or the t other taxpayers to subsidize that, to subsidize me buying a luxury box. I mean, shit. We're we're giving Pat Bowen one, right? So who's he? That I, or why aren't I good enough as as him? Um, and you're right. It's welfare for the rich in this country, and that's what's wrong. If we can give welfare to the rich, why can't we give it to the poor? Yeah, that, that's that's a strange paradox. Is that uh, basically uh, people who who uh, are on disability or those that uh, are homeless or whatever are benefiting twat zero from this? Uh, all they're being done. All that's happening is they're being actually closed in right where they're at no opportunities so as and the prices rise food and uh, brand and everything then, uh, then you still got nothing then you still got less than you had before you got less than you had before right. exactly and, and, and buying power right and then once once this little tax cut goes through watch watch how prices jack up because you know why because when you it's the simple economics when you got more money in circulation than you ever had then what's that worth you know what I mean? I mean, even drug it dealers know that. lowers the value. That. Exactly. Even drug dealers know that. Why do you think cocaine's gone down in this country for the last 10 years straight? From $100, $100 a gram when I first started using cocaine to where I've been clean now five years. But in the last six, six to eight years, cocaine has dropped. It's done nothing but drop in price because of this wonderful drug war we're fighting. How do you think half the cocaine gets in this country? Through the armed services or through other areas, how do you think the CIA was bringing it, letting them, letting the CIA bring it in to fund money for the Contras when Reagan was president? It hasn't changed. It's uh, not going to change. You know why? Because this talks and everything else can walk. Plain and simple. Simple economics. You put all this money that Bush is getting ready to put this tax cut through, right? It's going to do nothing but flood the entire country with money. And when you got a whole bunch of money, then what happens? Everybody starts saying, well, if there's more out there to get, I'm going to need to get more for mine. Because right. you got the electricity crisis in California. So what's that do? That makes prices go up in restaurants. It's all a domino effect. And then, of course, we, uh, we lower the uh, amount of money put into social programs. Exactly. And while you're flooding the country with making other people rich, but that's all right. The rich will have to pay more for everything they have. But the problem is they'll, they have, got, to they'll have to build bigger more. gates. And right, uh, and they'll have more. And not only that, when they start having to pay more, they're in control of the upper structure of the economics, okay? When they start paying more, what happens? Everything else goes up more. You think they're just going to pay more and not want to get it back? Shit. So you, do you have a problem with, like, saying the, the vice president makes $36 million this yeah, year? Yeah, ain't that sweet? Ain't that sweet? He paid fourteen million in taxes. Ain't he did that give great? some to charity. Oh well, I think he could, huh? If I let me tell you something, if I had thirty-six million, I think I'd give a million to. I'd take a hundred dollar bills in million in a million dollars and just walk down the street and give it to people that need it. I was wondering why uh, they didn't report exactly where he made his money or how exactly. Made it on stock options. They, they didn't get into the particulars. That's because the news is controlled by the, you know, the rich too. And there is censorship in the United States of America, which a lot of people go, oh, you got to be Yeah, wake up and smell the coffee. 